Hi, I'm Paolo with Community Soil Foundation, and today we're going to focus on episode three, Scotch Broom, the invasive species, and why we want to remove it. So Scotch Broom is an invasive species due to its vigorous growth and its longevity in its seed pods. Not to mention after its second and third year, it can grow tens and thousands of seeds which aren't harmed by fire. Today we want to talk about fuel reduction, stopping more fires, and creating healthy ecosystems. So what does an intact ecosystem do? Diverse plant communities sequester carbon from the air and store that carbon down into the soil. This helps prevent climate change. As Scotch broom outcompetes native plant communities, it destroys our functioning healthy ecosystems. Creating its own monoculture, Scotch broom disturbs our year-round transpiration cycle and creates a fuel ladder for future fires. 60% of our seasonal rains come from the ocean. Another 40% come from inland through the transpiration of healthy ecosystems. Transpiration is when moisture leaves through plants. Having transpiration year-round is important. It is this release of moisture that creates humidity, which builds healthy precipitation cycles, which means more rain. One of the main issues with Scotch broom is its ability to become a fuel ladder for future fires. The plant can grow up to 15 feet tall. In this landscape now, it was all completely burned three years ago. And this plant is already close to eight feet tall. So not only is it casting shade on a lot of the natives below, suppressing biodiversity, it's adding a fuel ladder to the trees above. Now we look at Scotch broom and we know that it's from Central and Western Europe, and we see it here in Northern California. And that's not primarily what makes it bad, it's what its characteristics are. It's the vigorous growth that we see suppressing the biodiversity and its ability to become a massive monoculture. And when we look at healthy ecosystems, it's all about biodiversity. Thousands of types of grasses, shrubs, trees working together. So if a fire comes through a landscape, a healthy ecosystem, has the ability to repair itself. Now what we're seeing here in Sonoma County and North, North America is spaces are being touched more and more by fire. And often people have that relationship where they contend the wild and mitigate what creates fire. So if we look at this plant unattended through successional fire, sending off 10 to 20,000 seeds a year, it slowly can become this next hill over, which is 90% of Scotch broom in a matter of a few years. Now let's talk about removal of Scotch broom. There's three keys to removing Scotch broom. First, work with nature and the seasons. In the winter, remove any Scotch broom you can by hand. In the spring and the summer, when broom is in bloom, cut it at the base. Two, use the proper tools. A decent amount of broom can be a large amount of labor, and with the right amount of tools, work can be easy. Three, a dedication to revisit the site. After you do all that work, come back and see if you see any new regrowth for removal. Tools needed for the job are pruners, small and large loppers, handsaw, machete, a tarp, and wood chips if available. Remember, don't use any tools that you do not feel comfortable using. Proper tools are key. Depending on the size of the stalk, you wanna have an appropriate pair of pruners or loppers. In spring and summer, when scotch broom is in bloom, it's a perfect time to cut the plant down. Just remember you have to cut it completely at the base. So if there's a multi-trunk scotch broom plant, you need to go below those branches and cut out the entire base. We're not disturbing the soil, we're cutting the plant back and we're making sure we're all the way at the base. After cutting the plants, it's important to add mulch to the area. Mulch is critical to suppressing the hardy seed bank and insists in creating healthy soils. Whenever possible, keep your mulch on site and broadcast it or spread it over any area where you have seen scotch broom growing. So if you have a site that there's large swaths of broom, acreage, hundreds of acres. Some keys are call your local RCD or NRCS. 
reach out to your local supervisor and see what resources are available in your county. Call your local CAL FIRE and see if you qualify for a controlled burn and a site visit. So once you start chopping the broom down, you're gonna have piles of broom and we wanna make sure that you don't do the work twice. So get those larger piles of broom and gather them either in spaces that you know you have road access for a chipper to come down to eventually or start putting them in piles where you're going to, in the, in the rainy season, burn them in place. Or if you don't have access and it's a steep hillside, chop all the broom down and chop it again on site and make sure that the broom itself is not any higher than 12 inches because we can ask for the broom to become a mulch itself and suppress weeds itself in place, but we don't want it to be a fire hazard. So we wanna make sure that the broom is matting down and breaking down right on site. Next year, you're gonna come and this material is gonna be bedded down and you'll just start seeing volunteers of new seed. And, and that's what's really gonna guarantee the long-term success is following up and pulling this out. This biomass is great to pack and put into creeks, to use on hills for erosion. Just mat it down into the ground on site and we can use this as a good mulch. One of the great things about Scotch broom is it creates a large amount of biomass which can be used on site. One of the things that we like to do is to feed it to the goats, pack it in a goalie, prevent some erosion. But if you got these big piles, you wanna know where you're gonna plan if you're using a chipper specifically so you don't have to move the piles twice. A few keys to managing large amounts of biomass are chop it and drop it. Leave it right on site. If you have goats or your neighbors have goats, invite them into your land or chop it and feed it to your goats. Call your local supervisor and see if there's a chipping service available. Another approach people use to tackle large swaths of scotch broom is using an herbicide or a chemical spray. A few issues with using herbicides or chemical spray specifically are if you're spraying a mature plant, then you have a large shrub creating a fuel ladder that's dead in place. So it still needs to be cut at the base and removed. The second part is if you're coming back and spraying a first or a second year plant, the spray itself doesn't discriminate what it kills and it will kill all the natives around it the same space. So if you're using a spray, it's extremely important to have a dye put inside the spray so you know where it's going and what plant it's going on or if it's going on your body specifically too. And when you're doing the spray, you've got to have complete body protection, eye protection, and some type of respirator protection. Overall, what I've found is it's more labor using spray and, and more cost because you're coming back again after you spray to do the work and you're asking for your ecosystem to restore, which is recovering from the spray again. So when you think about using herbicides or chemical sprays, really I wanna encourage people to think about it as a last option and to look about what's your plan in the future once you do the spray because you're creating a larger fire hazard for your own property or your neighbor's property once you put that chemical application down. Human beings have been tending the wild for a very long time and our opportunity to deal with Scotch broom is just another chapter in how we coexist with our ecosystem. Stay tuned for our next episode on post-fire land restoration and remember with Scotch broom, cut it in bloom and it's all about the follow-up to pull it out in winter.